the properties of light and its impact on our lives never cease to amaze us. Light, or electromagnetic wave, plays a central role in many aspects of our lives and is a key concept in physics. Fundamental questions such as the interaction of light with matter, the propagation of light waves and the transfer of energy have been the basis for many important discoveries and theories of physics. But if light is a type of electromagnetic radiation that is usually associated with the visible part of the spectrum, what can be said about a concept like darkness? More precisely, the concept is there. But is the phenomenon itself there? Even if you turn off the sun, the Earth will not plunge into total darkness. Light from stars, nebulae, and even the Big Bang itself will illuminate your sky in this case. The planet itself and everything on it, including our bodies, also emit light and it will be visible in the infrared. Even if you somehow found a way to turn off the sun, even then it will emit a certain level of light almost forever. There's enough for our age and for many centuries to come. But of course, it will be eerie to realize the eternal cold. So as long as we can see, we'll see. No optical sensor can detect total darkness or take black holes the darkest of the supposed objects. Even they are capable of emitting some percentage of light, according to some theories. In physics, unlike in the realm of interpersonal relationships, light always defeats darkness. Electromagnetic waves are a collection of alternating electric and magnetic fields that propagate through space at a specific frequency and wavelength. The spectrum of electromagnetic radiation includes in addition to visible light, radio waves, microwaves, infrared ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays. Yes, light plays an important role in physics because of its ability to interact with matter and change its properties. When light particles, photons, are absorbed, atoms and molecules move to higher energy levels, which can cause chemical reactions, thermal radiation, changes in the state of matter, and even nuclear reactions. Where does light itself come from? Let's take the example of the emission of light by the sun. In our star, numerous chemical and thermonuclear reactions take place, which are accompanied by the emission of quanta of light. When two hydrogen atoms collide, they combine to form one atom, called deuterium, which is lighter than the atoms from which it was formed and the extra energy is released as a photon. Deuterium, in turn, joins one more hydrogen atom, and helium. Three is formed, and one more photon is released. When two helium, three atoms collide, helium, three atoms collide, helium. Four, two hydrogen atoms, and one more photon are formed. So, the sun from four hydrogen atoms produces one helium atom and three photons, and that's just from one chain of reactions. Each of these photons carries a large amount of energy and for tens of thousands and millions of years, wanders inside the sun, colliding with atoms, heating up the sun, and turning into dozens of photons with less energy and frequency visible to the eye. Sooner or later, these photons fly out of the sun and go on a long and sad journey through space, and some of them come to Earth, giving us light and warmth. So what are the physical characteristics of light? First, it is speed, one of the most important fundamental constants in physics. In a vacuum, it is equal to almost 300,000 kilometers per second. What about the speed of darkness? How fast will the eerie darkness descend upon us? The simplest answer is that the speed of darkness is the same as the speed of light. Turn off the sun and our sky will be dark eight minutes from now. What we used to call the speed of light is the speed of propagation, and it is not always the deciding factor. The shadow that falls across the landscape is cast by objects, and the feature of those objects 
and the distance from them will determine how fast it falls. For example, a rotating lighthouse searchlight illuminates the surroundings at regular intervals. However, the relative rate of dimming of the surroundings increases with increasing distance from the lighthouse itself. If you move far enough away from the lighthouse, the shadow will catch up with you faster than the speed of light propagation. Isn't that right? The same thing happens with neutron stars in space, for example. In other words, in this case, the speed of light will only mean a delay. Even if the beacon is pointed directly at you, you will see the light. Not immediately, but with some delay. However, this will have no effect on the course of events that you will see when you are in your position. In any case, you have been detected and have nowhere to run to. Moreover, light has an inherent wavelength. The spectrum of visible light is just the part of the electromagnetic spectrum that the human eye can see. The cone-shaped cells in our eyes act as receivers tuned to wavelengths in this narrow band of the spectrum. Other parts of the spectrum have wavelengths that are too large or too small and energetic for us to see. When objects get hotter, they emit energy, dominated by shorter wavelengths, changing color before our eyes. The flame of a blowtorch changes color from reddish to bluish as it is set to burn hotter. In the same way, the color of stars tells us their temperature. Our sun emits more yellow light than any other because its surface temperature is 5,500 dek. If the sun's surface were colder, say 3,000 dek, it would look reddish, like the star Betelgeuse. If the sun were hotter, around 12,000 dek, it would look blue, like the star Rigel. Reflection, refraction, and absorption of light are the basic processes that occur when light interacts with matter. Let's break each of them down a bit. Reflection is the process by which light reflected from objects hits the smooth surface of a mirror and is then reflected back, giving us an image of the object. That is, the angle of incidence of light is equal to the angle of reflection. Further, refraction of light is a phenomenon in which light rays change their direction of travel when passing from one medium to another with different densities. This causes objects in water to appear displaced or distorted compared to their position in the air. This is why faces in water are so creepy. Finally, absorption is the process by which light hitting the surface of an object is converted into another form of energy, such as heat. This occurs due to the interaction of light waves with material particles. For example, when an object is illuminated with blue light, the object may absorb all the blue waves and reflect red and green waves. As a result, the object will appear greenish Red will appear greenish, red. This explains why objects have certain colors. They absorb some light waves and reflect others, and is not the work of sorcerers. So, the interaction of these three processes determines how we perceive light and see objects in the world around us. Reflection and refraction form the images of the objects we see, while absorption determines their color and brightness. Unlike light, darkness is not a physical category, but rather a relative state. It's not even that. It is a subjective perception of the state. Photons may or may not be reflected. Retinal cells may trigger memory processes, but cannot explain the subjective experience of darkness just as waves cannot be represented by anything more than our experience of color or sound. Our subjective experience changes from time to time, but the individual parts of that experience lie outside of time. And in this sense, we can say that darkness itself has no speed. What is speed in the common understanding? And does it exist at all? It presupposes in advance the existence of some space in which it can be measured. However, in the world of quantum physics, 
where the familiar concepts of conventional physics often become useless. It is believed that space itself is one of the derivatives of a more fundamental level of reality, where there are no such concepts as position, distance, or speed at all. In conclusion, let us try to draw some conclusions and clarify how important and inseparable all the properties of light are. We already know the basic characteristics of light. It is a form of electromagnetic radiation, consisting of photons, and has the ability to propagate in a vacuum at a constant speed. At the same time, light is often described in terms of its dual nature, having the properties of both waves and particles. This unusual property is not only striking and surprising, but is also an important key to understanding fundamental mechanisms in quantum mechanics, as well as phenomena such as interference, diffraction, and polarization in light. Light also plays an invaluable role, not only on our planet, but in the universe as a whole. Its ability to deliver information from the farthest reaches of space, to create conditions for life on Earth, and to serve as a tool for studying and understanding the world around us, makes light a true magical phenomenon. We owe it to light for the ability to see and perceive our surroundings. It allows us to admire the beauties of nature, distinguish colors and shapes, and facilitates our social interaction and communication. Thus, whatever light is by nature, it is one of the most amazing phenomena ever discovered by mankind. But the question of how light originally came to be remains open.